your next comedian. Are you excited to see him? He is here all the way from Austin. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. You should be more excited. He's an extremely funny man, a personal favorite of mine. Oh. And he's amazing. Please put your hands together for Blake Midget! I, I didn't know I was anybody's favorite. <laughs> Say that. Right. I hope I get to card somebody. Sorry. Uh, how, how is everybody? That's, that's great. Put your hands together for everybody you've seen tonight. Got that out of the way. So, nice to see you again, sir. Seen a bunch of old friends here this evening. Uh, and Sean Worley has bought me the grossest shot I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> so if I throw up on stage, you guys can all autograph it. <laughs> Cast it in bronze, we'll keep it on the floor. This place stays in business for another two years. Then <laughs> <laughs> I went to bed. Sorry, I just found out that Willem Dafoe wasn't gay. My mind is blown right now. <laughs> but you guys are a pretty good looking audience. Fairly well groomed. Imagine some of you shave your balls, maybe? We get a show of hands for ball shaving? I, I knew that. <laughs> oh, I, I, can't, I can't shave my balls. I, I did once. I got dumped. I'm like, well, maybe if I shave my dick, I'll feel better. And that is, if you look like me, it's a bad move. Like, this man, I'm sure his dick looks like it's carved out of marble. <laughs> I, my crotch looked like somebody made like a fake dick and balls with like a Play-Doh Fun Factory. It was a very humbling experience. <laughs> I just turned 35 this week. Yeah. Next milestone stroke. <laughs> I, I, I really hoped uh, by this time in my life that I'd be like happier with where I was. I'm not, because I, mean, still, I still have dreams, so I'm still working towards them, which is beautiful. But like, by the time my grandfather was my age, that man had won a world war and raised two children. And I myself remain childless and have yet to complete the fire in the hole challenge at the Pluckers Wing Factory <laughs> in Austin. It's, it's shameful. I even think about it for motivation when I'm up there. You know, him as a young man. Storming the beach at Okinawa into a hail of Japanese gunfire with no regard for his own personal safety. And meanwhile, I'm sitting in air conditioning, armed with free refills and unlimited blue cheese. I can't even choke down enough hot wings to get my picture on a wall full of fat people who clearly have more ambition than I do. And I blame my mother for all of my problems because I'm an adult, and that's what you do. Um, I mean, she's awesome, I love her, but she coddled the shit out of me. My mom never was like, hey man, you gotta be ready for life, because it's gonna take advantage of you, and if you let them, people will fuck you in the ass, in jail, or at work. <laughs> or wherever people get fucked in the ass. Do you guys have your ideas on me? <laughs> get in there. <laughs> I was a door guy for a long time. Hardwired. Um, but no, I didn't have a mom like toughen me up. She was just always telling me anytime someone wrong, she's like, it's okay. Because you're my son, you're destined for greatness because you're special. And that is how you raise a sandwich artist. <laughs> so beat the shit out of your kids. <laughs> or DDT them, is that it? <laughs> That's awesome. I would love to DDT a baby. <laughs> Shut up. Pour a snake on top of her. Jizz on. Oh, you don't jizz on baby. That's cool. I learned the hard way. We're not close to any schools or anything, right? Um, <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? You look like dicks. Ah, where are we? Oh yeah, no, so, I, this, this is rage, I have a, this insane, what are they, what the fuck, these, oh, 
Can they hear this? Is that, is that a thing that happens here? No. <laughs> Damn it, they're coming. All right, everybody, shh, quiet. Don't say anything. Guys, shh, don't want a movie. Could you, could you stand outside for like two more minutes? Thank you. So, all right. Oh yeah, I, I have a, a ridiculous sense of entitlement, no work ethic at all. Like I said, I'm 35, there's not a birthday that's gone by that I haven't been sitting on my couch waiting for Hagrid to knock on my door <laughs> with a letter of acceptance from Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and a pep talk about how I'm the savior of the wizarding community. I didn't know how it would go. I'd look up into his big, gentle, bearded face and say, Really, Hagrid? Me? The unwanted offspring of a mailman and a telemarketer? I'm the chosen one? And he would laugh and say, Mailman? Blake, you were the firstborn son of Marilyn Monroe and Thor. We just hid you from your parents at birth because it's a great plot device. And then faster than you could say Gringotts, the fantasy starts to change. And Hagrid transforms from a lovable half-giant into an enigmatic black man wearing a disturbingly sexy leather outfit. And he's offering me a choice of two pills. I can take the blue pill, and the dream ends. I wake up on my couch wearing cut-off sweatpants and crying into a bowl of ramen noodles. Or I can take the red pill, and I get to have sex with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> This is director's guy. Why are you shaking your head? Come on, he's hot. You weren't even watching. Babe. Can I have a drink? Yes. Thank you. Um. I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you. Well, I would love to stay and do more time, but there's a thousand comics still have to come up here. Yeah, a thousand. You want? Go. If you want. You guys want to hear about my dick more? Oh yeah. Oh. What the fuck? Nobody's ever said that, except for Parker. <laughs> so, sex. Thank you. Uh, has anybody in the room ever fucked a comedian on purpose? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew the answer to that question. Before I asked it, uh, I think that's kind of fucked up, ladies. The squeeze line. Because there's a lot of benefits to fucking a fat, pasty white dude. For instance, you know that old, uh, that thing where you like us to go down and lick you where you're gross? <laughs> we don't ever do it. That's kind of a fat guy especially. Normal sex, I'm, I'm liable to have a seizure. It's a lot of work. But I'll go down on you like Curse the Alley to Waffle House Bender. <laughs> All up in your stuff. And selling point number two, because, you know, uh, I imagine you can tell, talk. Are you guys having sex currently? Okay, good. Because if you guys were brother or sister, it'd be real weird right now. <laughs> kind of hot for me, but weird for everybody else. No, but you know, some, uh, the man's in shape. Do you ever get bruised? For any... Yeah, it hurts, right? That'll never happen with me. Ever. It's padding. And that padding is also the source of the greatest weapon in a fat man's sexual arsenal. And it's called Stealth Dick. <laughs> stealth Dick is an extra three inches of cock hidden under a layer of fat. Doesn't show up on radar? Let me back up. Say we get drunk tonight, but not you, because he's big. And I'm unattractive, and I can see the way you're looking at me. But I say somebody decides they want to have sex with me tonight. Uh, we're going to your place, because I don't live here. And I'm going to just throw up in your living room because I'm lazy as shit and your, your bedroom's upstairs. So I'm taking my clothes off while you're over here, bent over your dead grandmother's armoire, <laughs> just crying a little bit. And you look behind you and you see me naked and you notice uh, shame and a lifetime of neglect 
and then three inches of rock hard erection. <laughs> and you think to yourself, you can see any bigger dicks on the top I can handle this. <laughs> but hold on. <laughs> so I saunter up behind you, because I saunter when I'm about to get laid. <laughs> And the sweat dripping off my nose makes you think I've come already, but hold on. <laughs> you feel my glorious penis start to press into you, and you're very dry, so I gotta really go for it. <laughs> and it pops in there, all three inches. And you're wondering what time house is coming on. <laughs> but right then, at that moment, when your wrinkled, dry labia are holding back this clammy man fupa, like King Leonidas holding back the persons at the hot gates. <laughs> I thrust forward, four more inches of cock, never before seen by human eyes, rifles up your pussy like a Voltron lion. <laughs> Stealth dick. It's gross. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jesse. And thank you for supporting local comedy. It means a lot to everybody in here. Blake Midget, everybody! <laughs> Came here all the way from Austin to tell you why you should have sex with him. Do it. <laughs> you do it. You're... <laughs> I'm so glad you're turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Your next comedian, Mr. Derek Brown. Put your hands together. <laughs> your next comedian has won. Also a member of Fool State Comedy, and apparently a guy who gets laid very regularly. Please welcome to the stage, Josh Max Maxwell. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rukmani. I appreciate it. Uh, that is that is uh, not true. That's a bold-faced lie. It's not regular. I turn her down on numerous occasions. Uh, it's, it just gets incessant. Sometimes a man just wants to take a shower with someone else and then leave. You know, that's how it goes. And sometimes that shower has got to be brief. I'm not saying that I'm always brief. I'm not saying I'm not. But it's, it's one of those things where, like, it's not built for two to be comfortable. Sex in a shower is an awkward thing to have. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> That's definitive, isn't it? Jacob's like, yes, I've done, I've done the math. It's very hard. You like large girls, so I can imagine that those numbers are skewed. Uh, picking up large girls, picking up women in general. Let's talk about that for just a second. Because that's on the top of my head. Um, I found that people lately at like the bars and stuff have been using this new type of game and that is the lack of game that seems to be what sells a lot you just you go up and you talk to a woman and you're like listen i don't i don't really have any like good lines and i don't i don't really you know align myself with any group of people i just find that that i'm just like a a, a guy that likes a girl and women eat this shit up and you have fallen for one of the classic blunders and that is that the man that can look you in the eye and tell you he doesn't know what a man thinks thinks more like a man than you could ever possibly realize. Because he realizes that if he says something so hallmarky to you and you go, oh, that you'll be an easy sell on just about anything else. Hence, Jacob having sex with a fat woman in the shower. What? You moved over there now. That's you just going back and forth. So I think there's laughs coming from everywhere. I'm an echo. That's all right, I hear it in my head anyway. There's an uproarious applause. Um, I, uh, that was my, that was my tact. I used to do that. Like, I would go out to bars and I'd be like, listen, I, I, I'm just a regular guy, you know what I mean? I don't have any fancy lines. I don't have any fancy lines. I think you're great, you know? I think you're cool. I think we should get to know each other better. And then, it would backfire because she would come at me with like, yeah, well, um, it was, it was, it was a nice time. I got to know you better. I don't really like you. You're not, you're not my type of guy. And then I would say something like, Oh, but baby, you haven't seen the rest of it. Which is the worst tagline you can possibly tag on. Yeah, you know, that's just bad. Let's just quit that shit. So anyway, I ended up winning her over at the very end because I did the regular guy shit. And so uh, I'm one of those dudes that, uh, 
I've decided to attack life like head on, all right? You know, I feel like if you fear some immersion therapy, you're scared of snakes, you go on like one of those fear factor shows and you dive into a whole bed of them. So I'm, f um, I'm afraid of growing up. Not, not terrified of it, but it just sounds like shit and I don't want to do it. But I realize that like I'm looking older and older as the days go by and I need to find someone to just stick it out with me until I die. So I've decided to just headlong into the fray. Met this girl, we were dating for like maybe, oh, two or three days. I decided I'd move in with her. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, 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 but it gets better. She's got a kid, he's like seven years old. So I'm just establishing that like, hey, I'm an adult, we're not always gonna play video games together. No, trust me, when she's not around, we'll play video games together. But I have to do that like adult thing. So that's coming in, I have to split the rent with her. My parents have been paying it most of my entire life. So it's another hard thing I gotta do. So I decided it's not that enough. I'm gonna go on a vacation with her, and we're gonna do this whole thing like fucking adult style. So we pick a place, I know a few people, we go to Chicago. We fly in, and as soon as we land there, I head to the, the blue line. It's it's the, uh, the subway system there. And she immediately starts screaming and yelling about how she's not gonna be caught dead on that subway system when we can just rent a car. And uh, I started thinking like, okay, first of all, I thought we were gonna do this shit together. And there's no better way to spend a vacation than huddled tightly on a scary ass subway. And she thought, no, 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 we'll spend the money on the fucking rental car. And I was like, that is exactly the difference between women and men. That's right, this is a joke from the 90s with a new bank, so just listen. <laughs> men and women differ, and it's just on how you get there. It's not the destination, it's how you get there. And men are like subways. The best things we have, we keep down deep, deep down, doesn't matter what kind of crazy shit's on, we're like the backbone, we'll get you there eventually. Women, they're like rental cars, all right? Like, when you first meet them, the prettiest ones always have the most mileage. No one clues you in that the guy that had it before really fucked it up. And then eventually it breaks down, you gotta make all these frustrated phone calls and everything. People are passing by, you gotta wait them out, like, no, 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 don't worry, man, I got it under control. I got it under control. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, don't go on vacation to Chicago with a woman that you have just met because it will end up ending in one of those kind of arguments where you just keep screaming the same thing over and over again while she bitches after everything under the sun and you immediately imagine that you have won her over with that argument. She will punch you in the face and this is what happens. You keep screaming and yelling, ah, 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 I see the light, don't worry, Brooke, my, I'm getting off here in a second. I'm just looking for a punchline in the middle of this rant. <laughs> it's in there somewhere, I'm telling you, it's a diamond in the rough. So she punches me in the face after all this argument. And if you do that to a man, this is what you get. This face right here. Uh, which is a mixture of shock, anger, and amusement. Shock because you just hit me. Out of nowhere. Anger because you hit me in the face. And amusement because you're a girl. Alright? If now, nah, okay, that sounds like the hatred of women staring at me. Okay. Can't see past this light, but I'm going to take that as a sign that I need to get up. You guys have been spectacular. Thank you very much. Max Maxwell, everybody, give it up for him and his amusement. Right. Your next comedian. Be gentle with him because this is his first time on stage. Please welcome AJ Figgy! Alright, I'm going to do the best I can. Thank you all for uh, your future compassion. So, I was walking down the street the other day and uh, there's this guy who had a few enormous bags of peas. He was really struggling with them. And I went up to him, I'm like, hey man, you want some help? He looks at me and he's all hesitant, and uh, it, he, it seemed like he just didn't, he, he didn't want to... Closer to mic. Thanks. Seems, it seems like he didn't want to allow my help because I was a total stranger. So I looked at him, I'm like, look man, I'm just trying to help. Speak now or forever, hold your peas. Uh, when I first started masturbating, I kind of figured it out. It was a stroke of penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny when I uh, when you say the word mumble, 
it still sounds like a mumble. <laughs> when um, when I eat Chinese food with people who've been to China, they tell me it doesn't taste the same as in China. So I was kind of wondering, does that make it imitation Chinese food? <laughs> Oh, uh, Jesus, he was crucified, you know, they, they nailed holes all over the place and everything. So I was kind of wondering if he could still walk on water, because, you know, a boat with holes in the bottom will sink. Uh, I don't use Italian dressing or French dressing on my salads, but... I'm a real American. I use ketchup instead. You know how they, they call a flock of sheep a flock or a gaggle of geese a gaggle? So a bunch of gay men together, I guess wouldn't that be called a faggle? <laughs> I can't help but think when people tell me, have a nice night, oh, what about the rest of my life? <laughs> I mean, it's, it seems kind of inconsiderate. Or when somebody says, the pleasure was all mine, well, I was here too, I kind of enjoyed myself as well, is that all that you of us get from it? Or when somebody says, I enjoyed myself, didn't you enjoy me too? I, I was here. Doesn't seem like you guys are, but I'm doing the best I can. Thank you guys for your cutting me some slack. Uh, What's your mic? What's your mic? Yeah, thanks. This guy's doing me a lot of good as far as having faith in myself. So my uncle, he's a he's a doctor. And he, uh, he was studying to be a pediatrician, and of course, through his studies, he had to cut off the foreskin of babies. And uh, the thing is, he, he took all the foreskin and made a wallet out of it. But the thing is, when, when he rubbed it, the wallet turned into a suitcase. <laughs> so, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, guys. I really enjoyed myself. You guys have a nice night. Give it up for AJ Fiddy, everybody, for having the courage to come up and find you.